Hi, babies. Hi, babies. I've had my goats locked up for the day. Um, my dad's been working on painting the fence behind me. And these goats have really enjoyed rubbing up against the fence and trying to eat it. So we decided let's go ahead and lock them up. I don't think they mind though. Do you mind? Hmm? Are you losing your winter coat? Look at you, you old goat. Oh my sweet baby girl. You literally have got mud all over you. My babies. This baby goat right here, her name is Coconut. And she was born on our farm a couple of years ago. And she's been definitely one of the most sweetest little goats. We raise boar goats here on this homestead. And uh, essentially we got into raising goats because our kids wanted to show. So they were doing livestock and they were showing with the 4-H. Um, but now they've kind of decided to go a different direction with the 4-H and they're actually doing more shooting club and archery. But these babies we've had on our homestead, they were all pretty much born here. And so it's, it's kind of one of those things. They've, they've actually turned into more pets um, than anything, you know. And, and I'm not going to lie, I don't mind having an animal that I can truly just come out here and, and love on. But I think with the plans in the future that we have, um, with the plans and, and what we have kind of going on, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how long we're going to end up keeping these guys. They're beautiful, they're 100% registered, they're boar, and um, they would make awesome 4-H projects for another young, a young kid that's getting into 4-H. Um, are you gonna be the spotlight, huh? Are you gonna be the spotlight? I initially wanted goats for dairy. I wanted to have an animal that I could milk and, and use the milk to help feed my family and then also to help feed our pigs as well and just kind of have that full circle cycle. Um, but the kids wanted to get into 4-H and they wanted to show and we didn't have a dairy category in our 4-H. In our we really only had boar goats for our, our category. They definitely have a place here on the homestead and they definitely have done really well on helping clean up around the fence line and also working with the cows um, and helping with that parasite helping with parasite management and having because of having multi-species um, grazing on the pastures but I do miss having babies everybody I know is having baby goats right now and and I miss that I miss the play I miss the the joy of having a baby goat the fence is starting to look really, really good. I'm actually really glad that we picked black. It looks really good. Are the bees bothering you? Yeah. Wow, look at them all fly. I can't, I did part of it. Oh yeah. Look, good. look over here. I did the back side. I want to see what it's going to look I like. I like it. Yeah, but I need to, before I paint them, uh -huh. when the wind's too much. Yeah. But I need to get through here and blow this all out and okay. clean it first. Yeah. I don't want to just paint over the grass. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. I do but like it though. Quick. I do like it. I think that's gonna look really pretty. Yeah, I like it. Look at those bees. Yeah, they're, they're Every really single good. colony has so much activity right now. I know, I've been watching them. Look, I love it. I love we it had, too. I don't think we lost one high. We didn't, 21 for 21. What a blessing. Every beekeeper experiences thing that happens in their apiary 
around the same time every single day. And in the afternoon, I noticed that all the new baby bees that have emerged and gone through their, their job requirements to get to the point where they're actually able to go out and start to fly and to forage, each bee throughout their entire life, from the day that they emerge to the day that they die, they have a role that they have to do. And it depends on their age with what their role is. The first job that a baby bee does as soon as they're emerged is their housekeeping duty. They have to clean that cell that they just came out of and get it ready for a queen to be able to lay a new egg. But every day, around the same time, you get to come out and you get to witness all the new bees that have gone through their job requirements and they're able to, to begin to fly. They're able to do what we call an orientation flight. And you'll see it. They'll all kind of come out and they'll fly up and they're kind of gonna go in circles a little bit and it all happens around the same time. And then it settles down. And then they're like, all right, I know my ordinance. I know where I'm supposed to go. It's definitely really cool to be able to see the bees um, do what bees do. Yeah, you guys are gonna see, you guys are gonna see the entire, you guys are gonna see hopefully the entire build of the barn in time-lapse. I've been really trying to learn how to do time-lapse with my GoPro. I am trying so hard to be tech savvy for you all to be able to be a part of this build. Um, but in the meantime, that's why I'm taking you guys and just enjoying this gorgeous day, talking about bees and goats and all the good things. Check it out. I still can't believe that they've only been working on it for three days, not even. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this or not, but this cherry tree started to bloom this morning. And all the bees are all over it. I think they're grateful. These little guys have been getting a very special treat lately. And I wanna take you guys with me and I wanna show you um, something that we've recently started doing again because it's kidding season and I've got a really good friend that lives down the road from me. She's got a large dairy goat operation where she makes the most delicious goat cheese. But I've been going and picking up all of her, all of the leftover whey from her cheese making from her dairy goats and these little guys have been slurping it up. They're absolutely loving the way from her. In the past I shared about how to sustainably raise pigs on a budget and there are so many resources out there that any one of you could possibly reach out to and see. Between breweries with the Brewers Graham, now having a friend that has a cheese making business and taking all of that extra away and feeding back to our animals there are always resources out there to be able to do and raise especially pigs in a more sustainable way you just have to know about them so if you have any dairy farms out there or anybody who's into making cheese on a large scale make sure to reach out to them see what they're doing with their way because essentially if they're not doing anything with it and they're dumping it a lot of protein that you could be feeding back to your animals um, my battery is about to die and I've got to go take my kids to youth group. So thank you guys for watching. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys. <laughs>